Hello everyone, today I'm going to be demonstrating two different ways to embed the complete graph of seven vertices onto the surface of a torus. What you see pictured here is how to embed the complete graph of four vertices onto the surface of a plane. And what is that? Well, it's called the complete graph of four vertices because we have four vertices labeled A, B, C, D, and we have an edge between any pair of distinct vertices. No edge overlaps the other, and thus it's considered an embedding onto the plane. As it turns out, that's the largest number of vertices you can do that for from the plane. But for a torus, it's not as obvious, but it's a well-known fact that the number is actually seven for a torus. That's the purpose of this video today because all of the visualizations on Google are pretty bad. So this is going to be demonstrating two of them I find appealing. So this first one, we cut uh, the torus like this. And so here A to B and A to B used to be next to each other before we cut it and then just stitch it onto this plane. Typically, what you see is you see a square and it has looping sides like you'd see this but the problem is is that it doesn't really preserve the symmetry between each seven points you don't really want to distinguish any one in particular which is kind of unavoidable when you do it like this because there's no natural rotational symmetry that you know you can appeal to here the nice thing is that once you prove that one vertex is connected to all the rest is kind of obvious that the rest are similar. As you can see, A connects to B, A connects to C, A connects to D, A here connects to E, A here connects to F, and A connects to G. There we go. It's the complete graph of seven vertices. There's no need to show anything else because it's obvious you can just rotate it and it'll just be the same graph. Uh, the other visualization method is shown here. So here, I've taken the liberty of labeling the complex plane with some numbers on triangular lattice points. These correspond to numbers in modulo 7 arithmetic. This is 1, but it also could be 8, or 15, or negative 6. It's just a representative of the congruence class. Uh, I just chose the numbers that are smallest. And the center is 0. And the neat thing is, uh, this isn't even required for the embedding, I just think it's neat. You can, for instance, take this number 3, multiply it by itself, and treat it like it's a complex number. 3 times 3 is 9, that's congruent to 2 mod 7, and it goes around the hexagon like that. 2 times 3 is 6, which is negative 1 mod 7. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3 mod 7. And it just, just works in general. You can treat these like complex numbers and just add the rotations and, and multiply the magnitude. And it all just works out very nicely. There's reasons for that, but I won't get into that. As for the torus, just vaguely, you can imagine that this is where it loops around. And indeed, zero has a clear connection to every non-zero point. And say something like negative one, Similarly, it has a connection to every non-negative one point, and so on and so forth around, and it just loops forever like that because of how modulo arithmetic works, and it's very pretty.